what's going on guys so bit of a change up um, got a CNC plasma table this is a Torchmate 4x4 uh, gross series from what I understand they quit making the the gross series in 2015 and that was basically because you could get a, a 2x4, a 4x4, a 4x8 and I think a 5x10 and then you kind of put the pieces and parts together you can get a, a Lincoln plasma cutter, you can get um, a Hypertherm 45, Hypertherm 65 I think and obviously the, the Lincoln. You, you basically put it together well from what I understand uh, Lincoln was having issues because people have their own ways of putting stuff together and then they're having to do warranty work blah 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 um, so now the only way you can get it is it as one assembly that's why they quit making this this series so I picked this up a few months ago and I've just been so busy with everything else that's why I hadn't done any videos um, just with work kids other projects so I finally got back to getting to this and I'm almost to the point where I can start using it. Whenever I got it, it was it was full of water, which it's, it's supposed to be. It, it came with this, this sheet. Uh, it came with these little brackets, not quite sure what those go to. But it came down in here and cleaned all of this out. Uh, and, it, and it actually came pretty pretty clean from what it was. Gonna show you from underneath. There's a a drain over there. There's a drain for the water right there. And you can see there's a, a wire that comes down there. That is for the x-axis, uh, I guess right side. And then there's a x-axis left side. So this is a magnetic base. And I guess you manually set the torch height uh, to whatever you want it to um, it did come with a Dell laptop which also came with a whole bunch of pre-programmed uh, G codes um, DXF files and stuff so I'm pretty excited about that whenever I bought it the guy told me the only thing it needed was um, these little belts uh, the belts had broken and since they no longer make this he wasn't able to get it from what I understand he, he wound up buying a newer bigger machine because this one worked so well so that's why he got rid of this put down below how much you think I bought it for and remember it came with supposedly all it needed was just those belts and it came with the computer with all the with all the files in there and everything so um, I'll let you know at the the end of the video how much uh, how much I spent I think I got a pretty good deal this is a four foot by four foot I figure that's that should be a good size to get things going um, I will get a welding blanket and wrap over the Corvette so I don't have to worry about weld splatter or anything like that I don't it should be fun but you never know uh, it will have the water in there I'm just trying to get things <clears throat> get things working like I said, the guy told me that all it needed was a belt, so I'll show you the belt. Belt goes on this little guy. There's this belt, and then there's one on the other side. And the pulley on the other side was bent in, so I'm thinking that's probably why it tore that tore the old belt. Uh, I wound up buying ten of these. These were only like three dollars and sixty-five cents or whatever. But I figured it's better to have them now. Um, and especially since they don't make this series anymore it's better to have them now and so I'll have them in the future so uh, anyway so I wound up getting the belts I did try to clean it up a little bit it came with the Hypertherm 45 not the 45 XP which would be nice but you know now here's the the issue that I'm having and I'd greatly appreciate any any help <laughs> all right so got a couple cables coming out of the plasma cutter so have this here so I have this here this goes to 
the power, the main power, the 220 volts. This right here comes out, and I have these connections. Um, this green wire did. This green wire did go into this little piece here. It does have a red wire here and a black wire. Looks like it goes to some kind of uh, power source of some some kind. There's also another wire coming out of here. And it comes up and it wraps into this bundle of joy. And it is just basically cut off. So I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, now on here, I did make this little bracket because I kind of want to keep it off the ground. This is what I've found out so far. So this here goes to power. This here goes to the computer. Um, this is the y-axis, so it's the one that goes across the gantry or whatever. And then I have two of these. Okay, sorry about that. Ran out of ran out of room. <clears throat> See, I've been trying to make videos for y'all, but I, I don't think they come out very well. So, all right. So back to this. All the information I can find on these is the Accu Move or Accu View. I forget what it is. I think Accu View is a contacts. But anyways, um, it's like an Accu Move Two or something like that, and it's a bigger, newer model. Uh, it doesn't have this this older model, so I'm not quite sure how to hook stuff up. Um, now coming back to this one, which comes off the front of the. Well, I guess it's the back of the, the plasma cutter. I have this, and it fits into this part. So, fits perfectly into there. Um, and it's actually shaped different, so it can only fit in there. There's no other spot for these black and red so I don't know if it goes to another power source which I don't know why because this has power anyway so there's that I'm 99% sure it goes there because it fits in there and it's a weird fitting um, again this is power this goes to the computer uh, this goes to the y-axis so one that goes uh, this way and then the x-axis this way um, I have two motors on there and it says axis uh, let's see it says axis one two three and four I messed around with this I can only get it to the x-axis to work on axis three I don't know if there's a connection where I can put both of these together and then it goes into one here or if there's a parameter somewhere that I can have axis 4 as well as axis 3 work in conjunction together. So yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. And again, I just made this quick little bracket just to keep it off the ground. I'm also going to make a little a little shelf to kind of keep that up off the ground. Once I have everything together, I'm going to bundle up all the wires and uh, use some zip ties and kind of keep everything nice and neat and organized for the most part. Now the computer was pretty dirty. I wound up cleaning it up and it, it cleaned pretty decent, I guess. Everything works on it as far as I can tell. So that's good. Okay, now this is old uh, Windows 7. So we have... It does have the Torchmate CAD, which I'm going to learn, I'm going to have to learn how to use that. The Torchmate 4, from what I understand, this you can make files and you basically turn your idea into DXF file, or basically turn your idea so a computer can understand it. And then the Torchmate 4 is where you put the G code. And then that tells the plasma cutter to 
do its thing. So if I come up here, I found one that was pretty neat. Go to file, open G code, and sorry this isn't really picking up that well for whatever reason. This will pull up a lot of these pre-programmed stuff. So he's got two inch circle, three inch circle, five inch circle, five, uh, six inch. There's a uh, 55 Chevy. So if you put that in there, that's the thing about this older computer, it, it takes a while. But, you get this. That's already in there. Um, one thing that I really like, control O, we'll get us over here. There is a, a buffalo something or another. Best feather, a big feather, this best feather is a, well, it's just feather. And I have no internet out here. This does not have Wi-Fi, so. Buffalo napkin fold holder. So this is pretty cool. This is already in there. And then basically all I need to do is just fold it here and fold it here. So this piece will come up like this. This piece will come up like this. You put your napkins in the middle of it. So that's, that's pretty neat. I didn't see this bucking horse. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a bucking horse. Brand for wedding. I don't know what that is. Let's check it out. Oh, so A heart K. So congratulations to them. Um, but it, it kind of shows you the, the tool path. The, the solid lines is where it's actually going to uh, cut. These dashed lines is just where it's moving so it can do the cuts and all that stuff. So I suddenly remembered why I don't like recording all the time. It filled up the memory so I had to delete some stuff and then come back to it and then after that then my battery died then I had to go find my batteries blah blah blah. So anyways, um, here, here's a whole bunch of these files um, so as you can see there's there is a bunch on here and you can see the different stuff We are in Oklahoma, so that's why you see a bunch of Pistol Pete and Sooners. There you go. Uh, let's see. Um, I am kind of excited about this, though. I've been wanting to make a 2x72 uh, belt sander. And then that's kind of has it all laid out. I can not see that well. But anyways... Um, yeah, so I, I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of different files that's already on here, so I'm, I'm, I am pretty excited about that. Like I said, I'm so close to getting this thing running and going. Like I said just to show you, just to show you again, uh, the air on off switch. Um, I don't know if you can see back behind here. But that that little knob is to adjust the air on the left is for the power at 220 volts that middle one is the one that has these crazy cables and then that last one um, it's the one that's just it's just the one that's kind of cut off it's just cut off and it, it does look like there's a black and a red wire in there um, now I'm thinking since this doesn't have a Z axis um, I think you just set it to the to the height that you want it by this knob and getting it to where you want it there and then going I guess I don't know but I was thinking maybe if you had a Z axis where it does go up and down that one of those wires would be um, like a touch off so once it does touch it'll know that it's it's touched the piece and then it'll back it up however far it needs to go in order to uh, not drag across the piece hope that makes sense I don't know 
Yeah, we, we went through all these slats. Um, a lot of them are really pretty good. Some of them, like this one, not so good. That's why it's way in the back because it'll probably, well, it can't get used. That's as far back as it'll go. But for the most part, a lot of these are, are in really good condition. So yeah, let me let me know what you think. Um, I did have to do a lot of moving around. I really can't get into my gun safe very well. Uh, it it is what it is. My scroll saw is on a stand with wheels, so I should be able to pull that out if I want to use it. Uh, I can still kind of get to all my nuts and bolts and springs and all that stuff. Um, but I did have to get rid of my table saw. It was a 10 inch table saw. It was made like in the 60s, man. That thing was built like a beast. Hated getting rid of it, but um, I'm hoping I can start making some money with this. Making different signs and different um, metal art and stuff like that. So, uh, we'll, we'll see. And then hopefully I can get into to CAD and learn how to do CAD and then make money on top of that. So, I don't know. Alright, y'all... Y'all take a guess at how much I spent. Brand new, and now this is today's money. <laughs> and with inflation and, and the new one, base model is $27,000. Um, to get all the bells and whistles, and that's for a 4x4. Four four. I have no idea. Uh, 40, it's a Torchmate 4400, I think is what it's called. That's a 4x4. Four $2,700 to uh, is a start off cost with that. I bought this for $1,700 with the Hypertherm 45. Back behind there, it's the Thermodynamics uh, Cutmaster 42, I think. 45, 42. I think it's 42. Um, but it's in, the, it's in that box back in there. And that's. I'll probably wind up selling that one because here locally the hypertherm is easier to get uh, consumables for um, now obviously I can get them online probably cheaper but if it was a Saturday or something and I, I say I really get into this and I have a job that's due on Monday or you know something crazy and I have to get them there there are local stores that have pieces and parts for this um, I would like to get a new torch so I can use the hand torch as well as the, the plasma table torch. So anyways, yeah, um, sorry I hadn't seen y'all. I've just been stupid busy. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. See ya. Okay, bonus. Alright, so... On to my son's truck. We got rear brakes done. Got a new line there. And then we got new hard lines here. It goes into new new cylinders with new um, new shoes and hardware. And all I did was just clean up the drums. And so now he has rear brakes. We bled off the clutch. So it does have clutch. Now I don't know if the clutch plate is stuck or not. But um, it does have a clutch pedal. Um, next thing we need to do is wiring and front disc. No, and the front drums. And bleed that. And then we should be able to drive it around the block, I think. But we'll get to that once, once we get there. On this one, 2015 Cadillac Escalade have been having some transmission issues. Go figure. These are known for having bad transmissions. The Tahoe, the Suburbans, all that stuff. They're all basically the same thing. Um, whenever I get, get to a stoplight or a stop sign or whatever, um, I'll get going about, I don't know, maybe five miles an hour. And then right before I start, it revs itself up with my foot still on the brake. It revs itself up and then slams down in the first gear. And sometimes it chirps the tires, but it, it'll it'll lunge forward. So um, got to be prepared for that. What I was told was it was the um, 
transmission wiring harness like inside and so I put that new wiring harness in there that came with the new uh, transmission temperature temperature sensor that came with the new transmission temperature sensor and I thought it worked because for about a oh a weekend I didn't have any issues and then it's doing it again and this is very sporadic I can go several days without it doing anything or I could have a day and it's almost every stop. Okay. On to the wife's car. This is a 2014 uh, Kia Sorento. Um, needs an O2 sensor. Um, but today it was overheating and I didn't have any external leaks. Come to find out, I think it is a head gasket. So that is going to suck. I really don't want to do a head gasket. Okay, so Suns 2000, yeah, 2000 Chevy Silverado. Um, this, is, this is actually running pretty good. Not, nothing really wrong. Um, he got a few things that he wants to put on there. So fortunately, uh, good running little truck. 2005. F-350. Uh, got a new bumper. Um, I want to put that in and then I also want to put in some rear backup lights integrated into the rear bumper. I think that'll be cool. Um, so that's one thing I need to do. Um, these batteries are fairly new and I've been having a parasitic draw and I can't figure it out because it's not all the time um, I've checked it several times and not all the time I have a parasitic draw so came out one day and these batteries were completely drained to nothing like two volts if that so I got to figure that out the other thing is that's on the list that I need to do with this is um, four-wheel drive is not engaging inside the cab and so there is a uh, there's a vacuum pump right there and from what I understand that pulls that draws a vacuum on the hubs which engages the which engages the four-wheel drive uh, the other issue that I'm having the other issue that I'm having is the um, trailer brakes still not working um, I got a new brake controller it was used and still not working so if y'all have a F-250, F-350, Super Duty, whatever, let me know if you have a aftermarket brake controller and how you mounted it. Because I like the factory one, it looks nice, but I'm, I'm almost to the point where I'm like, you know what, forget making it look nice. Let's make it functional. Alright, so I was having issues with this outlet. Uh, if you remember that video, the... Um, lamp post video so you can see that see, it looks like fire kind of cool huh anyways that uh that outlet stopped working and kind of found out it was the the outlet itself so got a new outlet put in there and it took me three tries the other two from from the story from the store factory were bad so keep that in mind okay the lathe uh, nothing wrong it's just messy and is what it is uh, Corvette I know this kills a bunch of y'all and kinda me too but um, I really don't know what to do because the carburetor isn't working right I have probably 90% of everything I need to switch over to 
uh, EFI. Um, I think I need fuel lines is I think all that I'm needing in order to switch that over. But that that's just where I'm at. So I don't know if I want to take the carburetor out, take the tom and the money to redo that or just whatever money I was going to put into rebuilding that, put it into the EFI and have it going. But I don't have Tom to do it because I got to do it all myself. So um, I do have a friend of mine uh, that said that he had helped, but um, it's one of those things we're just always busy. Okay, I got these. These are the battery clamps that goes to the next project. So let's go out. Good thing is I do have a lot of flat, flat steel, so that's cool. Make signs and stuff. Still got ducks. There's three ducks. There's four ducks. And we got two chickens. I don't know if you can see them. They're roosting up there. These are big old fat chickens. But, see all them eggs in there? Here, look at this. Yeah. We need to come out here and get some eggs. <laughs> see the little chickens? Chicken eggs? And then the duck eggs. So if you ever wondered, that's the size difference. Full moon. Okay, so we got to use the kayak rack and it turned out really well. Um, I did a, one of those short videos or whatever and it turned out really well. So uh, I do highly recommend doing this little project for your trailer. Alright, this tractor, awesome, amazing. Does great. Um, I did just put this uh, hitch on here so uh, yep I don't, I don't know how well it'll work or how well it's not gonna work because I just did it um, hadn't had a chance to, to figure it out yet so I almost think I should have knocked off this hook and put it on this right here uh, but we'll see but this way I'll be able to move this trailer around which I'll get to that here in a second but uh, if you remember the uh, the winch that I did, the trailer mount winch, or the trailer hitch mount winch, now if my tractor ever gets stuck, I can hook it up to this and pull it out. Should be good to go. Oh, this thing. This, this kind of takes me off just looking at it. I've had so much issues with it. So, I, I redid a whole bunch of the wiring uh, all pretty much all brand new wiring and I'm down to whenever the clutch is plugged in it kills the motor it's it's grounding out somewhere so I gotta have time to go in there and figure that out but it is finally running and it is charging so after I get that figured out then knock on wood this thing should run and drive and work. You can kind of see how narrow this is right here to back in this trailer. Whenever I'm going through the gate I have just a couple inches on each side and with that truck being a long bed um, and four door makes it really hard to put back here um, because I have to swing that front end of the truck a lot in order to move that so it does make it difficult. That's why I got the tractor uh, front mount hitch. Uh, so I can start doing that. All right, so the Foreman 450. Um, I think it just needs a rectifier. We, we started it up not too long ago and it wasn't charging. So I'm hoping it's just a, a rectifier. I already took it off as sitting in the garage. But um, after that, we should have brakes working and I think that's the main thing this one needed. The 250EX, um, nothing wrong with it but flat tires. And I don't want to use that hose because it is white and it's supposed to be red. That's how long it's been sitting. 
So my son started a pressure washing business and we wound up buying this hot pressure washer um, for really cheap but yeah the wiring is a mess and I was thinking if the, the wiring was shaved and not good or whatever we could just replace one wire at a time but a lot of these wires are just cut not put together yeah so it's, it, it wasn't as easy as I thought it'd be so I think what he's going to do is just save up money and take it to somebody that can actually fix it I told him whenever you're, you're whenever you're dealing with uh, pressure pressure and heat um, that's kind of a safety thing so definitely want to take the precautions that we don't screw something up and accidentally bypass a safety mechanism and the whole thing blows hot steaming water up or something I don't know so uh, that's where we're at with this all right guys well thanks for watching um, that's kind of the bonus footage I don't know if y'all like that or not but sometimes it's kind of interesting just kind of see what all we got going on so again I appreciate y'all y'all comment right we'll talk to you later see ya